Hello, I'm David Chaston with 98.9, 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news market signals are all turning negative. First on Wall Street, markets are very much lower. The S&P equity index was down 2.8% in morning trade, and in early afternoon is still down 1.7%. And that is important because it means that market, the market is now lower than when it started in 2018. US Treasury yields are also a lot lower, reflecting the risk-off retreat. Wall Street has followed Shanghai down, which lost 1.7% yesterday. Hong Kong fell an eye-popping 2.5%, and Tokyo fell 1.9%. In between, European markets lost more than 3% overnight. We're in a major correction now. Not helping is data from the real economy. We get the US non-farm payroll data this weekend, and the precursor ADP survey has come in weak. In October, they reported a jobs gain of only of 225,000, and markets were picking November to be lower at 195,000. However, it has come in at only 179,000, and that's well below the average gain of the past year of over 200,000. And that's also well below the November 2017 level. Initial claims for unemployment, which jumped last week, have stayed high this week, compounding the feeling that the giant US economy has gone off the corporate tax cut-induced boil. And new orders for US-made goods recorded their biggest drop in more than a year in October, and business spending on equipment appears to be softening, suggesting a slowdown in activity in their manufacturing sector. And the American trade deficit in goods got even larger in October, making their deficit the largest since the GFC. Any trade improvement agreements China thought they had with the US took a blow yesterday with the arrest of the Huawei CFO in Canada for extradition to the US. Huawei is a company closely tied to Beijing and controlled by the PLA, and the move is short at damaged trade talks. It looks like hostage-taking. The trigger issue is Iran sanctions violations. There is other news, and some of that is not good either. Carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuel burning, the primary cause of climate change, will grow for the second consecutive year in 2018, according to a new report. China's emissions will increase by 4.7%. Total global emissions are set to increase by 2.7% after a 1.6% rise in 2017. And the growth in passenger air travel, which sagged in September, picked up again in October. But that uptick is more modest than the earlier rates of growth. Asia-Pacific international passenger travel grew 5.8% year-on-year. In Australia, there are growing concerns about how their prescriptive regulation of banks is working out for them. Regulator pressures, and there are a lot of them, the ACCC, APRA, ASIC, the RBA and the Hain Commission, are all driving banks to behave and respond in the same way, essentially as regulated utilities. But that will have a huge economic impact, essentially lessening competition. The regulators might complain about it, and the RBA did overnight, calling out banks for PAC behaviour, but that is a natural consequence of their own micromanaging and prescriptive regulation actions. New Zealand's principles-based regulation approach is far better for retaining competitive instincts in these central financial markets. The US Treasury 10-year yield is sharply lower at this time than this time yesterday, at 2.86% and compounding its recent fall. Their 2.10 curve has stabilised, however, at 12 basis points. Gold is up $4 today at $1,241 an ounce. US oil prices, however, are sharply lower today at just $51 US dollars a barrel. The Brent benchmark is now just on $59.50 a barrel. These are big one-day drops, exceeding $2 a barrel, and come even after OPEC signalled a production cut. The problem is that they look like they're being gamed by Moscow, and the deal may unravel quickly. And here's an interesting twist. The US is now a net oil exporter. Without that market for crude, oil's future looks dim, especially if it has to compete with the Americans. The Kiwi dollar is starting today softer at 68.7 US cents. On the cross rates, we're stronger yet again at 95.3 Aussie cents. And this is a level last seen in July 2017. Again, against the euro, we're at 60.4 euro cents. The result is that the TWI is a little lower at 73.3. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9 brought to you by interest.co.nz.